Hey everyone, this is a step-by-step -step guide showing how to set up TensorFlow Lite object detection on the Raspberry Pi. At the end of this guide, you'll be able to run object detection models to locate and identify objects in images, videos, or live camera feeds on your Raspberry Pi. TensorFlow Lite is a subset of regular TensorFlow that has been optimized to run lightweight machine learning models on resource-constrained devices like the Pi. TensorFlow Lite models have a faster inference time and require less processing power, so they run at higher speeds than regular models. This video follows my written GitHub guide for setting up TensorFlow Lite, which is linked in the video description below. The setup process will work for both the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4, running either Raspbian Stretch or Raspbian Buster. If you get any errors while following this video, check the appendix in my GitHub guide, where I'll list common errors and their solutions. You can also try Googling the error, asking about it in the comments section of this video, or tweeting me at Edge Electronics on Twitter. I usually respond fastest on Twitter. All right, let's get started with setting up TensorFlow Lite. The first step is to update the Raspberry Pi. Open a terminal and issue sudo apt-get update. Then issue sudo apt-get upgrade. I just updated my Pi, so there's no updates to download. Depending on how long it's been since you've updated your Pi, this command could take anywhere between a minute and an hour. If you're using a Pi camera, make sure the camera interface is enabled by going to the Raspberry Pi configurations menu, clicking on the interfaces tab, and verifying that the enable button is checked. If it isn't, enable it now and then reboot your Pi. Next, we'll download the full GitHub repository for this guide, which contains the Python code we'll use to run TensorFlow Lite and a shell script that will make installing everything easier. To download the repository, type git clone https github.com slash edge electronics slash tensorflow dash light object detection on Android and raspberry pi dot git. I promise this will be the only long command we have to type out. Once it's typed out, hit enter to clone the repository. This downloads everything into a folder called TensorFlow Lite Object Detection on Android and Raspberry Pi. That's a little long to work with, so we'll rename the folder to tflight1 by typing mv tensorflow, then press tab to complete the path to the file, then space tflight1. Then cd into it using cd tflight1. We'll work in this folder for the rest of the guide. Next, we need to create a virtual environment to hold the TensorFlow Lite packages in. Using a virtual environment will allow us to avoid version conflicts with previously installed versions of TensorFlow or other libraries. Install virtual env by issuing sudo pip3 install virtual env. Once it's done installing, create a new virtual environment called tflight one env by issuing python 3-m venv tflight one env this creates a folder called tflight one env that will hold all the Python packages for this environment. Activate the environment by issuing source tflight one env slash bind slash activate. Once it's activated, you'll see tflight one env appear in parentheses in front of your command prompt. If you ever close and then reopen the terminal window, you'll need to reactivate this environment by moving into the tflight one folder and then reissuing the source tflight one dash m slash bind slash activate command. Now we'll install TensorFlow and OpenCV. To make things easier, I wrote a shell script that will automatically download and install all the packages and dependencies. Run the shell script by issuing bash git pi requirements.sh. This downloads about 400 megabytes worth of installation files, so it'll take a while. Go take a break or grab a drink while it's downloading. When everything's finished, that means both TensorFlow and OpenCV have been installed. The shell script automatically installs the latest version of TensorFlow. If you want to use a different version, just use pip3 install tensorflow equals equals and then put the version that you want to install. It'll override the existing installation with a specified version. Next, we'll set up the detection model that will be used with TensorFlow Lite. You can either download a sample TF Lite model provided by Google or use a model you've trained yourself. 
A detection model has two files associated with it. A detect.tf light file, which holds the detection graph for the model, and a labelmap.txt file, which provides the labels. My preferred way to keep them organized is to create a folder named after the model and keep both files in that folder. Google's sample model is a quantized SSD mobile net model that's trained from the MS Coco dataset and converted to run on TensorFlow Lite. The sample model can detect and identify up to 80 common objects. The quantized part means it uses 8-bit integer values rather than 32-bit floating point values in the neural network. This allows it to run faster by reducing the memory latency and taking advantage of optimizations inside the CPU. Using a quantized model speeds up detection while having only a minimal drop in accuracy. You can find a link to the model on the TF Lite Object Detection Overview page, which is linked in the video description below. Open the page, right-click Download Starter Model and Labels, and copy the link address. Then, go back to your terminal, type wget, and paste the link address, then press Enter. This will download the model directly to the TF Lite 1 folder. Unzip the model to a folder called Sample TF Lite Model by typing unzip coco, then pressing tab to complete the path to the file, then dash d space sample underscore tf lite underscore model. Okay, now the sample model is all ready to go. You can also train your own model to detect custom objects. If you want to try it, I've created a written guide on GitHub that walks you through how to train a detection model and convert it to TensorFlow Lite. I'll also be creating a series of videos that walks through the process step by step. I'll put links to the guides in the description for this video. If you've trained your own model using my guide, you should have a folder called TF Lite Model or something similar that contains a detect.tf Lite file and a label map file. To use it, simply transfer it to your Raspberry Pi using a USB drive, and then move the folder into the Home Pi TF Lite 1 folder. Once it's been moved into the TF Lite 1 folder, your custom model is ready to go. All right, it's time to see the detection model in action. To run the real-time webcam detection script, use Python 3 TF Lite detection webcam.py dash dash model dir equals sample TF Lite model. This script works with either a Pi camera or a regular USB webcam. If your model folder has a different name than sample TF Lite model, use that name instead. Hey guys! So, once the program initializes, a window will appear with your live webcam feed and detection results drawn on the frame. As you can see, I get about 4.4 FPS with my Raspberry Pi 4, and that's about 3 FPS faster than I was getting with regular TensorFlow. So, it's a pretty nice improvement. Bye! I also wrote scripts to perform detection on videos and images. First, I'll show how the TF Lite detection video script works using my custom bird, squirrel, and raccoon detection model as an example. Instead of using sample TF Lite model for the model deer argument, I'm using my custom folder instead. To indicate which video file to process, use the dash dash video argument. When the program starts, it'll go through each frame of the video and draw detection results. This is a video of a bird feeder at my parents' house in Montana. As you can see, the custom detection model is very accurate at locating and identifying the bird. You can press Q to stop the script at any time. You can use the TF Lite detection image script on a single image or a folder full of images. I put a folder named Critters in the TF Lite 1 directory that has pictures of birds, squirrels, and raccoons. When calling the image script, I use the dash dash image deer command to point it at that critters folder. You can also just use dash dash image to specify a single image. The program will perform detection on the images one at a time. Press any key to move on to the next image, or press Q to quit. So there you go. Now you've got TensorFlow Lite set up for object detection on your Raspberry Pi. In my next video, I'll show you how you can get a huge boost in detection speed by using Google's Coral USB Accelerator. With the accelerator, I get up to five times faster frame rates when running real-time object detection. The next video will show step-by-step -step how to set it up and give a brief explanation of how it works. The improved speed of TensorFlow Lite makes it more useful for real-time detection applications like smart cameras or alarm systems. 
If you want to see a fun example for using TensorFlow on the Pi, check out my pet detector video where I use object detection to alert me if my cat wants to be let outside. I'll also be posting more videos of TensorFlow computer vision projects, so stay tuned. I hope this video helps you get started on your own projects with the Raspberry Pi. Stay tuned for my next video on setting up the Coral USB Accelerator. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your projects. Thank you.